Good morning. We are getting ready for our Sunday service. We hope that you guys had a great 4th of July. We definitely enjoyed our day. We spent most of our day doing some landscaping around the house, and so we were definitely hot and tired, but it was really a nice day. We did some barbecuing and stuff like that, so it was really fun. Thank you for joining on with us. We'll get started in just a few. We're excited about a good word this morning. We're going to share really quick on our Facebook page and then we'll get started. Comment below. Let us know how your 4th of July holiday uh, was spent. Hey, Miss Rhonda. Hey, Deacon Payne. Thank you guys for joining on with us. How you doing? So we're gonna get started shortly. Say hello to everybody. Say hey everybody. I think she's starting to get a little shy on the camera or something. She understands what's going on more and more <laughs> each time. Okay, well, we have a few people that's joined on, so we're gonna go ahead and get started so we don't take too much of your Sunday, but we're excited about a good word this morning and just praising God and thanking him for everything that he's done for us. Again, we thank you uh, for joining on with us. We hope that you had an awesome 4th of July holiday. Mm -hmm. Again, we spent mm -hmm. our holiday outside in the yard in the heat. It was so hot mm -hmm. yesterday. Yes, Lord. And we were doing some uh, landscaping around the house. It was so much fun. Um, it was like my first time I know ever, you know, getting down in the dirt and pouring down mulch. But he is an expert at uh, Brown's editing. Nursery. <laughs> Brown's Nursery. Shout out. My boy JB Green. Yeah, so he, he he did most of the work and I just kind of pointed my finger. Not I did a little bit of heavy work heavy work, but it was really a, a great time. We enjoyed that time with each other. We got out on the grill and then of course uh after we were finished with everything we tried to get ready for today. So we hope that you guys had a great Fourth of July holiday. Um we are here in honor of the St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church. My name is Patience Tally. I'm here with Pastor Tally and our little Demi Tally who's being a little uh, feisty with us this morning. Um, we are a church that is Bible-based, Christ-centered, family-focused, and mission-minded for all the promises of God in him are yeah, which is why we believe when Jesus says yes, nobody, nobody can say, say no. We believe that with our whole heart. And we, we ask that you um, start saying that with us. We say it every time. And so we want you to also feel um, those missions and those values that we feel um, with us. We uh, only have a few announcements. We will continue to worship virtually um, past July and August until we feel uh, extremely comfortable going back into the church due to the COVID-19. But when we do go back into the church, we will continue to, to uh, video all of our services and live stream all of our services. So we thank you and we ask that you continue to worship with us virtually if you cannot come to the house of the Lord when we join back together. If you would like to worship with us through giving, please visit our website. Uh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. If you would like to worship with us through giving, please visit our website. Our website is www.stjosephnbcwestmonroe.org. That's a mouthful, but that's our website. Or we have three methods of giving. We have Cash App and Give Up by our Cash App. Um, information is the dollar sign St. Joseph MBC or if you would like to worship with us um, by mailing in your tithes or offering our mailing address is 206 
Newton Natchitoches Road, West Monroe, Louisiana, 71292. And so those are our um, our methods of giving your tithes and offering for our members, our visitors, or our friends that would like to worship with us through giving. Um, if you're interested in joining our ministry, we are so excited to be branching out um, with our virtual and our live stream to allow other people in our congregation to start to do our Sunday school lessons and maybe even our prayer call and possibly our midweek worship so that we can uh, we can allow them to allow God to use them in everything that they do as well. So please, if you're interested in joining our ministry, contact myself, contact the pastor, or you can send a message to St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church page and just let us know i'm looking for a church home i'm looking for a church family and we would love to welcome you with open arms so we're going to go ahead and get started with our worship period we're going to start with song um we are just excited we are this this has been what how many weeks have we been doing this i think i saw somewhere where it's 114 days wow that we've been in this uh, coronavirus, quarantine, yeah. stay home, limited exposure. Yeah, baby, so. it's, it's been a mm -hmm. very, very long time. So yeah. we thank you guys for being so faithful since day one, since that second week of March that we have started this thing. Um, it has been such a blessing in so many different areas for our church and our ministry. Um, hey, Sister Belinda and Mother Pratt. Hey, we have a few Belinda, other people hey, on Pratt. that I can't really see right now. But we just thank you guys for always uh, being warm and open. And we thank you for commenting. Your comments yes. uh, it are what keeps share. us going. Please, Please share, share, like, comment. and Let comment. Let us know you're out there. Share the word with your friends and family. Yes. Um, we always like share it on our page and then uh, some other people they'll share it with their friends They'll send it in like direct messages So be sure to do that so that you can bless someone with this word So we're gonna go ahead and start um, with our worship period and we're gonna sing I give myself away It's so important for us to open ourselves up and willingly give ourselves yes, to Lord. God We have that choice God has been so gracious to give us um, the ability of choosing and so we should choose God we should choose God each and every day um, I, I was looking at a documentary or a, um, a series on saying yes to God each and every day and that's so important for us to wake up every morning and say yes to God and give ourselves to God so today we're going to be singing I give myself away and the lyrics are so simple I give myself away so that you can use me I give myself away so that you can use me. My life is not my own. To you, I belong. I give myself away. So if you will sing this song with me, and we will get ready for the word. Amen. Amen. Like, comment, and share. Let us know you're out there. Spread the word with somebody else. Spread this fellowship and worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're just going to invite God into our homes, wherever we are. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I give myself away. Here I am. 
Take my heart.
and just worship the Lord. Thank Stop you, and just praise Him. Surrender to God. this moment right yes, now. Don't Lord, let this moment here. pass. Jesus, Don't let this opportunity you, pass Lord. you by. Jesus. He is here. Thank he is you. here right now. He's yes, there with Lord. you. Wherever you, you are, however you are, whoever you are, whatever yes. you're up to this morning, Thank stop you. right now and just give God the glory. Hallelujah. Give he yourself is. away to the Lord. He yes, is lovely. Lord. He is lovely. He's he is perfect in all his ways. Able all to do anything but fail. I don't know what you've been up to. I don't know what you had going on last night. But give yourself to the Lord right now. Give all of yourself to the Lord. All of your problems. All of your heartache. All of your pain. Give it to the Lord and give him all your victories as well. Give him your successes as well. Give him your love as well. Give him your peace as well. Give your entire being to the Lord. Give yourself away. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, come on, come on. Sing with us. Sing with us. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, I give myself away. Yes, Lord. So you can you Anybody give themselves away right now, right now, right now. Swallow that pride. Swallow that pride. Get over that fear right now. To my pastor, Reverend Charles R. Brown Sr., who I see is online, and Lady Brown. Uh, to our deacons of St. Joseph, our mothers, ministers, uh, our ushers are also tuned in. We got choir members tuned in. We got friends and family tuned in. It is good to greet you all with grace and peace this morning. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. If you will, turn uh, your Bibles to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, we'll start at verse number 8. Genesis Chapter 3, we're going to start at verse number 8. And I'm reading King James Version translation this morning. Genesis chapter 3, start at verse number 8. And it reads, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Mm -hmm. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Mm -hmm. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Amen. We're going to come from the subject this morning of sin won't win. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Sin won't win. Amen. Anybody know that sin Amen. won't win? Sin will not win. How many of us believe that, that God knows where we are at all times? 
Do you believe that God knows where you are at all times? I believe that today, uh, no matter where we are, no matter uh, how far away we think we are outside of his will, God knows exactly where we are. The thing that I've learned about him and him knowing where we are, his omniscient power, uh, able to know all things, right? Omnipresent. Not only does he know where we are, but he is there and available as well as omniscient and uh, omnipresent power, omnipower, omnipotent. He has all power. Uh, uh, the thing that I learned about that is that God, uh, because God is not an accuser, uh, he will ask us where we are so that we can admit that we're not where we're supposed to be. Let me say that again and see if you can connect to that or relate to it. Because God is not an accuser, he asks us where we are so that we can admit that we're not where we're supposed to be. Remember when, when Jesus asked Saul of Tarsus in the book of Acts, uh, he asked him the question, why are you persecuting me? Now, Jesus already knew the answer to this, but it was for Saul to admit his reality. And there are times where God will ask us a question, not because God don't know the answer, but so that we can verbalize and vocalize and voice, maybe even confess and admit, acknowledge and recognize the condition that we're in. Jesus already knew the answer for Saul, but he wanted Saul to admit the reality of his condition, of what he was doing. And our text here is a very familiar text, Genesis chapter 3. For anybody who started uh, to try and read the Bible in, in an entirety, you usually get around chapter 3, chapter 4 before you tap out in Genesis. Genesis chapter 3 is where the temptation of Eve, the first sin, man's failure, uh, the temptation and the fall of man occurs. You can go back and study on your own at what happened there, but I want to speak this morning to encourage somebody to know that in this relationship with God, you will do some things that's going to make you want to hide. In this relationship with God, you're going to do some things that's going to make you want to hide from God. You're going to do some things that's going to make you not want to hear God, but I come to encourage you to know that sin won't win. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter that you separated yourself from God's love because you are already in communion. It doesn't matter because you are already in a covenant relationship. And it ultimately doesn't matter because you're already in Christ. And we'll find in our text that sin won't win because of this familiarity that we have with God. That in spite of uh, that we may not have gone to church in recent days or recent months. In spite of the fact that you might not have dropped on your knees and spoken to God. In spite of the fact that you may not have paid your tithe. In spite of the fact that you got more gossip than gospel on your tongue. You are still familiar with God. But not only that, not only are you familiar with God and that allows sin to never win, but it's also because you are found by God and you have fear in God. Let's look at it. In spite of our sin, we are still familiar with the sound of the Spirit. Look at it, verse 8, Genesis chapter 3, verse number 8. We find out how familiar uh, Adam and Eve are, even after they've sinned. It says this, and they heard. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Now, praying and supplicating, I realized that God brought us to this text this morning because somebody is struggling with themselves. And the first thing God wanted me to do is to remind you that you are still familiar with the fellowship of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because uh, you may have done some things that have displeased God, just because you have done some things to try and uh, that make it feel like you are disconnected from God, or just because you've done some things that may have divided your ministry and your purpose, it does not mean that you have lost a remembrance of the, of the, of the fellowship of God. You are still very familiar with the fellowship of God. Because you've sinned, just because you've fallen short and are shamed by the fact that you've erred or misdealt, uh, doesn't mean that you don't understand the sound of the Spirit anymore. 
right away our text shows us that in spite of what they had done, the text shows us that they are still familiar. How do I know? It says right here, and they heard. Adam and Eve knew that when they heard the Lord coming, he would want to be with them. This was, this was how the Lord fellowshiped with Adam and Eve. He was very intimate, very close, very natural in his relationship with them. And so not only are they familiar with the sound of his voice, but they were familiar with his presence. They already knew what the expectation was. When God comes around, we already know what he want to do. In other words, just because you've fallen short in the relationship doesn't mean you how the relationship works. Just because you've, 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 you've lied on someone, just because you've stolen from someone, don't mean that you all of a sudden don't know their morals and values. It doesn't mean that you don't, that you've just completely forgot how to love them or how to be a friend to them or how to be in a relationship with them, how to be a teammate with them, how to be a co-worker with them. Yeah, you went home and gossiped about your co-worker, but the next day, you know what you need to do to work with that person, to collaborate with that person, to cooperate with that person. You knew and so we see here in the text, in spite of the fact that Adam and Eve had fallen short of the glory, they were still familiar with the fellowship. Uh, just because you hadn't prayed in a while, that means all of a sudden you don't know how to talk to God. Just because you danced in a club more than you danced for Jesus, don't mean, doesn't mean that you don't know how to worship and praise the Lord anymore. You are still familiar with the fellowship of the Lord. Even without seeing God's face, we can still uh, be familiar and we can still feel his presence. But watch this though. Like many of us, Adam and Eve, uh, although they were familiar, uh, they forgot uh, that they couldn't uh, 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 run from uh, the presence and the power of God. That they couldn't run from the fellowship, that the expectation that God had in this relationship, let it remain. And so what they try and do, like many of us, they try to hide from God. Because they knew, Adam and Eve knew, that when God calls, he's coming. When God calls, he's on the way. He's coming to hang out. He's coming to spend time there familiar with the fellowship, familiar with the relationship and the expectation there, uh, there, there is in that. But the text tells us that Adam and his wife, that they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. But no matter how hard you try and hide from God, know that you will be unhidden. No matter how you try to conceal yourself, you will be revealed. And the text shows us that, yeah, in spite of what they had done, they were still familiar with the expectation. They were still familiar uh, with the fellowship of the Lord, with his fellowship, with his voice. Because they were familiar with these things, it's an automatic that they would be found. Let's look at it again. We'll see what I'm talking about here. Verse 8 says, and they heard the voice. They were familiar with of the spirit, and so they knew that it was God. Then it gets to the point where it says that Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And then verse 9 comes right in and says, And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? This again proves to us that Adam and Eve, they knew that their attempt to hide themselves, to conceal themselves, to cover themselves had failed. Hearing God's voice indicates that, yes, you are familiar with the spirit. Yes, you are familiar with the expectation. Yes, you are familiar with the relationship. But even more than that, many of us try to hide from God, but because we are familiar with him, because we're familiar with the fellowship, because we're familiar with the relationship, we will be found. I like it. We, we see more of that in verse 9. It says, and the Lord God called unto Adam. And said unto Adam, where art thou? Watch it now, because remember what we talked about earlier. God knows where we are at all times. But he will ask us where we are so we can admit that we're not where we're supposed to be. In other words, it's not that we aren't found by God. It's more so that we can find ourselves. 
Let me, let me bring that to you again. God ain't asking you where you are right now. God ain't even asking you how you're feeling right now just so that he can get an idea of how you're feeling. Just so that he can get an idea of why you're doing what you're doing. Just so he can get an idea of where you are. He already knows. He already sees you. He's already calling on you. Sin won't win. He already knows where you are. However, he's asking you this question so that you can find yourself. God isn't asking this question uh, to interrogate us as some as some angry commanding officer, but more so as the as the heartfelt cry of a heartbroken father. God obviously knew where Adam and Eve were, uh, but He also was realizing uh, and bringing to the attention, bringing to the call of the now that there is now a serious separation between Himself and His creation. A separation that only he himself would be able to reestablish. A connection that he himself would be able to bridge. And so God's question, you could probably even take it a step farther and see if it even applies. Adam, Eve, why are you where you are? Somebody has, a, has an issue with blaming and, and, and pointing the finger and saying, I don't know how I end up in this situation, so... Maybe God is asking you this morning, why are you there? But what I really like about this text is that in spite of the sin, this is where I want to encourage you now, in spite of the sin, in spite of falling short of the glory, this is for you now, God still seeks Adam and Eve. Did you notice that? Verse 9 tells us that he calls out to Adam. Now, uh, back up a little bit, watch me now, stay with me. Now, keep in mind where we are. This is Genesis chapter 3. This is the first time man sins. And this is the first encounter between man and God since the sin. Yet, God still has a desire of man. The first sin, the first time. Adam displeased God the first time Adam disobeyed God the first time Adam was disconnected from God the first time Adam was divided from God the first time God was separated from the very thing he created and this is their first standoff showdown encounter if you will of addressing the fact that they are now separated and this is to encourage you to know that whether it's your first time or your millionth time, we find out that God still has desire of men. He still called Adam by name. Many of us, with our short tempers and our pride and our attitude, like to give folks that old one and done rule. You do wrong by me and you gone. You can go ahead and hit the road, Jack. However, we see early in this relationship with God, a God, now the same God in Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, the same God who created heavens and earth, the same God who created man, not only did he create man, but he gave man purpose and power. He gave man dominion and the ability to be fruitful and multiply, to whom he had given so much to. God still seeks man out, even after man allows sin to separate him from God. So it's easy to take from this text, Pastor Tally, that you mean to tell me that even though uh, I'm a wretch undone, even though I'm set in my ways, even though I'm stubborn as an ox, even though I was out all night doing what I do, nobody don't need nobody good but myself. You mean to tell me, Pastor Tally, that God to find me, that God is still seeking me, that God is still calling my name? And the answer is yes. He still desires you. He still calls on your name. He still seeks you. So no matter how lost you are, no matter how unloved you feel, no matter how lonely you are, God seeks you. He's calling on you and you will be found. Sin won't win. Hearing God's voice indicates that you're familiar with the sound 
of the spirit. Hearing God's voice, Adam and Eve heard the voice of the Lord and it instantly let us know that there is something on the inside of me that know I've done wrong. We all got that ticker on the inside that says, wow, this feels good to the flesh, but my faith is shaken by this. I know I'm not connected to the will of God. I know I'm not walking in alignment right now. There is something on the inside of us that's going to go off to remind us that we are familiar with God. For Adam and Eve, it was the voice of God to indicate that they are still familiar, that they can still hear God. And even more than that, like Adam, like Eve, because we know what God's expectation is. Because we know that when he comes into the presence, or when we enter into his presence, we know what the expectation is. We know our role in the relationship. And so like Adam and Eve, they felt like they might not be able to live up to the familiarity of the fellowship. And so they try and hide. But because, what you got to understand, because you're already familiar with him, because you're already in communion with him, because you're already in covenant with him, there's nothing that can keep you from Christ. And so we will be found. As we close our text, we'll see that even before our faith increases, our fear increases. Let's look at the last verse in verse 10, Genesis Chapter 3, verse number 10. This is Adam speaking. God asked the question, not because God didn't know where Adam and Eve were hiding, but so that Adam and Eve might be able to admit that they had separated themselves from the will of God. Look at the fear here. Verse 10, Adam speaks, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Because I was naked and I hid myself. We see Adam's fourfold confession. He says, I heard. That's that familiarity. That's that acknowledgement of God. He says, I was afraid. That's that guilt discovered. He realized, he recognized the fact that I'm not alive. I was naked. That's the effect of sin. When we separate ourselves from God, no longer are we covered. Then he says, I hid myself. Guilt. That's the result of guilt. Is that we will hide ourselves, attempt to hide ourselves. Many years, many of us have been out there in the world on our own thinking we're hiding from God. Adam's response does not express a personal responsibility, but it acknowledges something very important. It acknowledges something uh, extremely significant. It, it, it denotes, it, it, it acknowledges the fact that life has changed. Life has changed. Adam admits in a fourfold confession that my life has changed. Shame, fear, and guilt have entered the paradise. And as a matter of fact, Bible scholars, let me give you this fun fact. This is the first time that fear is mentioned in the Bible. It was sin that made Adam afraid of God's presence and afraid of God's voice. Can I ask you a question today? Why are you afraid of God? Why are you afraid of God. And yeah, watch this now. Of course, stay with me. Because we talked about it. Those who uh, fellowship with us on midweek worship, we talked about that fear of God. Those who are in the Sunday school lessons with us, if not, go to our website now and get caught up on that fear of God. Adam says, I was afraid. He didn't say, I didn't fear God. He said, I was afraid of God. Watch this. We talked about fearing God as a matter of reverence. We talked about fearing God as a matter of respect. We've talked about fearing God as giving him rule over our lives. But many of us are afraid.
stage of a relationship with the Lord. And if I had to guess, better yet, how about this? I'm not going to guess what's going on with you and God. But if I just think back over my life, I've been afraid of a relationship with God just like Adam. Because of my shame, just like Adam. I've been afraid of a relationship with God because of my sin. Just like God, just like Adam, I've been afraid of a relationship with God because I know that I've fallen short of his glory. Is there anybody know that there truly is no reason to fear a relationship with the Lord? Because today I come to break news to you that sin won't win. Sin will not win. I know you feel trapped and caught up. I know you feel stuck between a rock and a hard place. But I bring the gospel to you today. I bring good news to you today so that you can let sin go. Because sin won't win. Anybody know that sin won't win? Sin won't win. Shout with me now. Sin won't win. Sin won't win. How do I know? The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. He loved you so much in spite of your backbiting, in spite of your iniquity, in spite of your wicked ways, in spite of the fact that you turned from God rather than turn to God in your time of trouble. The Bible says that he loved us so much. Sin won't win. Yeah. Tell somebody sin won't win because he loved me enough that he loved me, his only begotten son. And it's easy for me. The process is easy for me. The process is easy for me. It's easy for me. All I got to do is believe in the son. Anybody believe in the son today? I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I'm talking about Jesus. Oh, believe in Jesus and sin won't win. And we will have eternal life. I'm talking about Jesus, the one who took all shame. I'm talking about Jesus now. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I'm talking about Jesus, the one who took all guilt. I'm talking about Jesus, the one who took all sin. He put it on his back. He put it on his back and up a hill called Calvary. He was where they hung him high. Yeah. They stressed him why. Yeah. He hung his head and then he died. But tell somebody, sin won't win because three days later, he rose with all power, all power, all power in his hands. Sin won't win. Sin won't win. And I want to encourage you today that no matter what you have done against God, no matter what you have done against God's people, you are still in communion, you are still in covenant, and you are still in Christ. And because of that, you are always going to be familiar. You know what God's voice sounds like. You always gonna be familiar with the expectation. You always gonna be familiar with the fellowship. You always gonna be familiar with the relationship. There's no need for you to go hide. There's no need to go try and cover yourself because you will always be found. And now it's not the time to be afraid of the relationship with God, but fear God out of respect and reverence, giving Him rule over your life. As your fear increases in the Lord, so will your faith increase in the Lord. The more you give him your life, the more you give yourself away to him out of reverence, out of rule, out of respect, the more you will be able to trust him with your valley situations, the more you'll be able to celebrate with him your mountaintop successes. Sin won't win. Sin won't win. So now you can hear God's voice and not have to hide. You can stay in familiar fellowship with the Lord. You are found in the Lord. And now you can have more faith than fear 
in your relationship with the Lord. Ain't the Lord all right? Ain't the Lord all right? Hearing God's voice indicates that you're familiar with the sound of the Spirit. And even more than that, I know you tried to hide, but you're going to be found every time. Because we're familiar with Him. We're going to be found by Him. Sin won't win. Because of the Christ. What took place at Calvary's cross. Thank you, Jesus. All you got to do is believe. Yes, Lord. All you got to do is believe. God bless you. God keep you. We extend the invitation to you right now. Yes, Lord. Establish a relationship with Christ. So that when you sin, you don't have to forget what he sounds like. You don't have to forget who he is, where he is, how you can access him. When you sin, you will still be in a familiar fellowship with him. God's expectation for you will not change. And no matter how far away you go, you will always be found. You're going to try and hide. You're going to try and cover yourself up. And it's not about being afraid of the relationship with God. It's about fearing God in a way that gives him the rule, the reverence, the respect of the relationship. Adam says, I, I knew the expectation. I knew I had done wrong. He said, I heard. I knew it was you, Lord. But I was afraid. Now is not the time to be afraid. He said, I was naked. Come now and get your cover and get your protection. You don't have to hide yourself. Come on out. Come on out. Come on to Jesus right now. Sin won't win. I don't know what's tying you down, trapping you up. Stand fast in the liberty. Wherewith Christ has already set you free. Be not again entangled in no jokes of bondage. Those things that have held you down, held you bound. It won't win. It will not win. He's already conquered it all. God bless you. God keep you. Send us a direct message if you'd like to be a member of the St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church. Give us a call. We're not a perfect people. I'm not a perfect pastor. We're not a perfect place, but we serve a perfect Lord. Thank God. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. Thank you guys for joining on with us. We hope you enjoyed that message. I know I did. Then he was outside saying, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so we know that God is working through you guys. He's working through Demi. He's working through um, me. And he's working on us as well. Yes, we Lord. just thank God for his message. We thank him for his word. I don't know if we even thank him enough for his word. For his word that reveals itself to us in so many different ways that is always so timely. <laughs> oh, Jimmy down there watching some stuff on YouTube. That's so very timely. And we thank you, God, for being patient with us. We know we can be we can be a little bit distracted with this little one, but but God is good and we just thank him for um just giving us the ability to continue to worship with you guys um, yes, through Lord. this online ministry and we just cannot wait to get back into the house of the Lord and um, hug your necks and love on you guys. Um, again, we, we greet you in honor of the St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church. We're going to pray and then we're going to let you guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Amen. Amen. Again, we come to say thank you. We thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Being a God of grace, a God of mercy. A God who forgives us, Father God, a God who, who made a way, Father God, that even when we separate ourselves from you, even when, Father God, we aren't doing what we're supposed to be doing, Father God, that you still make way that we don't have to hide from you. We don't have to live a life of shame and guilt. We don't have to live a life of, of fear and, and scariness and just being afraid of the relationship. But, Lord, we can maintain being familiar. We can maintain being in communion. We can maintain uh, being in covenant. And we can maintain being in Christ. Lord, help us right now, Lord. Yes, because somebody has been afraid of the relationship with you because of their sin. 
Help them know, Lord, that you are a forgiving God. That, Lord, you have already given us your darling son, Jesus Christ. We have paid the price for all. If you were still willing to call Adam and Eve after the first sin, yes, Lord. then I know even today in 2020, as we sin, you are still willing to call us today. Yes, you are, God. And we thank you for the, for the, for the desire to seek us. For the desire to call our name. For the desire to be in fellowship with us. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, that we can still hear your voice. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, I'm praying for somebody right now, Lord, who just yes. needs to know that they are forgiven. Yes. That sin will not win. That it's already been won. That Jesus Christ paid it all. Yes, Lord. And they can stand fast. Father God, I'm praying right now for uh, each person under the sound of my voice. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever it is that they stand in need of, Father God, I pray that you hear their cry. And if it's according to your will, Lord, I pray that you grant that. But not only grant it to them, Father God, but allow them to be a manager and a steward over it. Whatever that blessing is, whatever that opportunity is, that when you bestow it upon them, they will manage it. They will steward it in the way that you have them, Father God. Yes. Not taking it for granted, but taking full gratitude in it, Father God. We're still praying for our COVID-19 of uh, survivors, those who are still dealing with it in recovery, Father God. We're praying, Lord, that you continue to build that and heal the land right now of all the people, Father God. We're praying for Deacon Reginald Lamar Nelson. We're praying for Austina Pratt and Drew Pilot, Father God. These individuals that we know, other family members and friends that are extended to us who may have been diagnosed, go at them right now, Lord. We we thank you for all the victories that we've endured this season. We thank you, Lord, that you've that you've maintained us, that you've uh, uh, kept us, you preserved us, Father God, during this season, this passing season, Father God. Mm -hmm. And now, Lord, we just ask that you bless the St. Joseph Missionary Baptist oh, Church, yes, that this ministry, this house, your house, your people, you. continues to fulfill your purpose and build your kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now, Lord, as we depart this place, but never your presence, we ask that you continue to keep us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. amen. 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 You guys have a great Sunday. Um, eat those 4th of July leftovers. Amen. We're going to go and try and enjoy the pool for a little yes, bit Lord. today. Um, hopefully the rain holds off. I don't know if it's supposed to rain. I know it was yesterday and it may have gotten picked up today. But I ask that you guys keep us in prayer and we will keep you in prayer. God bless you.